Okay, guys. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about what we discussed in class on Friday, uh, October the 30th, in regards to the expository writing literary analysis essay they're going to be working on. And provided that you can fill this in um, it's to the best of your ability and you're willing to go back and revise, edit, and improve your work before beginning your final draft, uh, this outline really should act as both an outline for your essay to organize your work as well as um, your rough draft of the essay itself. So we're going to talk a little bit about what we discussed in class and what you should be prepared to work on and uh, how you should approach the different parts of this essay. So the first thing we want to talk about is uh, the theme that we're going to discuss. On your chart you're created uh, where you discussed the poem Oranges, the short story Seventh Grade, and potentially the poem Annabelle Lee, um, those should have a, a common or a universal theme. In other words, a, a lesson about life that um, the reader would learn, not only from one story, but from all three uh, you could apply it to, or other stories that you might encounter as a reader. So we need to figure out what our theme is. That theme could be something like love can make you do ridiculous things, right? And we saw that from the character uh, Victor in seventh grade who pretended he knew how to speak French to impress a girl. Uh, we had that in the poem Oranges where the boy... Uh, thought it'd be a good idea to offer an orange uh, as payment for candy for the girl he liked. And love can make you do ridiculous things. We definitely saw that in the poem Annabelle Lee with the actions of the narrator who sleeps next to the dead body of this uh, former love of his life. So you got to figure out what your theme is. And across the top of your chart that you completed... Uh, you should have a theme that would apply to the two stories by Gary Soto and even, hopefully, the poem by Annabelle Lee, if you chose to write about that. So the first thing we need to do is we would go to letter B. General sentence about the author and the text. So this is a sentence that has to include the author, Gary Soto, it has to include the names of his work, Oranges, and Seventh Grade. And remember, those are short uh, works, those two things, a poem and a short story. So Oranges and Seventh Grade should both be in quotation marks throughout the essay when you refer to them. So for this general sentence about the author, we might include the author. We have to include the author's name, Gary Soto. We have to include the names of the text that we're using, oranges and seventh grade. And we also just make a general statement about what Gary Soto normally writes about. So our sentence right here for the general sentence about the author and the text might say something like, you know, Gary Soto in his works, oranges and seventh grade shares the experiences of young adults and makes his work relatable. So that's a general idea about the uh, work we're going to be discussing in this essay. The next thing we would do is we would decide which three literary elements that we are going to talk about in our essay. And that could be conflict. What does the conflict or how does a conflict show that this theme that we're going to discuss in this essay is universal? We might say the characters demonstrate that this theme is present and therefore universal. Uh, we might say the climax of each story shows that our theme is universal and present in both stories. 
So the next thing we would do is we would write this thesis statement, which is the sentence that the rest of your essay is going to support. Think of this like the topic sentence of, um, of a basic paragraph. It tells you, the reader, what your entire essay is going to be about. And so for our example, the thesis statement might say, the theme of love can make you do ridiculous things is seen in both texts through the use of conflict, characters, and the climax of both stories. So now I've written my thesis statement. That is my most important sentence in this entire essay. The hook is a sentence that you're going to create that somehow catches the reader's attention and makes them want to read more, really pulls them in and makes them curious what your essay is going to be about. We've already written the general sentence about the author and the text. And then letter C, thesis statement, you're going to take it from up here where we focused on it to get started. And you're going to also copy the same sentence down here so you remember when you're typing that it is part of your paragraph, your introduction paragraph, and where it goes. Now, I'm going to talk about body paragraph one, but what I'm going to mention about body paragraph one is really the same format and the same structure that you have to do for body paragraph two and body paragraph three. So the topic sentence, I'm gonna pick one of the three things from my chart that I included in my thesis statement. Remember those, for my example, those were the characters, the conflict, and the climax. And I'm gonna pick one of those three things and I'm going to mention it here in my topic sentence. Now, what I'm highlighting is what we would call a sentence starter. I've given you the beginning of the sentence, but then you need to complete it. So I might, if I was writing this essay, I might say something like, in both texts, the author uses similar examples of conflict to discuss or show the theme, or I might say, uses similar examples of conflict to teach a lesson. So it's going to tell my reader, I'm going to spend this entire paragraph now, I'm going to spend the entire paragraph talking about climax, or I'm sorry, talking about conflict and how conflict helps teach a lesson of love can make you do ridiculous things. So then I have to ask myself, well, if I'm talking about conflict here, how does the conflict in seventh grade show that this theme is true? So I might say, for example, in seventh grade, Victor acted like he knew French to impress Teresa. Internal conflict, not being who you are, but act to say, do I act like who I am? Or do I pretend to be somebody else? That's internal conflict. So Victor definitely shows us that love makes you do ridiculous things through the internal conflict he faces. In the poem Oranges, I might say, in the poem Oranges, the boy put an orange on the counter to pay for the candy because, again, he's facing internal conflict. Do I tell the girl I don't have enough money and make her get a cheaper piece of candy? Or do I go out on a limb and put this orange and my nickel up on the counter and maybe she'll accept it. So these three sentences right here that I've highlighted, the topic sentence tells the reader which of the three things I mentioned, conflict, characters, and climax, I'm going to talk about. In the explanation, I'm going to explain how they're present in the story. This is optional, as you can see. Explanation. Uh, this would be if you were planning on writing about Annabelle Lee, you would also write here a sentence about how the character showed conflict was present as, in supporting that the theme, love can make you do ridiculous things, is also present in that poem. So you might say, in the poem Annabelle Lee, the narrator shows conflict 
because he may go against the family's wishes and go and still visit Annabelle Lee in her tomb, which they may not like. So that might be a sentence you put there. If you're not planning on writing about Annabelle Lee and you're just going to write about the two uh, Gary Soto pieces, Oranges and Seventh Grade, then you just put an X just kind of right here over the lines that says, hey, I'm not going to write about this part. The transition sentence. Transition sentence. This wraps up the paragraph you've just written above and introduces what's coming next to the reader. We do not want to say something like this. Do not do this. This was my paragraph on conflict, and now I'm going to talk about characters. That's not a very smooth transition we want to complete. So you might have a sentence that says, through the conflicts in this story, it eventually leads to resolution that also teaches us the theme. Through the conflicts in this story, it leads to a resolution that also teaches us a theme. So you've mentioned the word conflict, telling the reader, hey, I just got done talking about conflict, and now I'm going to go on and I'm going to talk about the next thing in my essay, which introduces the next paragraph. Paragraph two, same thing, writing about a second literary element, just like you did in the first paragraph. Just this time you're going to talk about characters or the climax. Body paragraph three, you're going to talk about your final literary element and how it helps support the theme. And then your conclusion paragraph, your restated thesis, you take your thesis statement, and remember how we talked about with topic and conclusion sentences in a body paragraph, we just changed some words, and maybe change the order of those words. Well, in this case, um, you would take your thesis and reword your thesis, maybe switch the order. For example, if the first thing you say in your thesis is the theme, and then you mention the works that you're going to use, oranges in seventh grade, maybe for the restated thesis, you switch that, and you lead off the sentence with the two names of the two works, and then you mention the theme at the end of the sentence. Just a, a way to kind of mix it up and make it feel like a new sentence. Second sentence of the conclusion paragraph, you would review the main ideas. This was present uh, through the conflict. This was present through the characters. This was present through the climax. And then you'd leave the reader a final thought and explain to them the importance of what you thought the literary elements were to these stories. How did they help the stories show that theme? So that's a little rundown of what we did in class on Friday. Uh, feel free to comment on this post on Classroom. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Make sure you tune in on Monday and every day you're gone uh, through meet.google.com and use the meet code Harris Live, and you'll be able to see and hear what we're doing in class. So thanks for checking this video out, guys, and let us know if you have any questions, okay? Talk to you later.